I just got done riding at the Vasa single track on my sweet 26 inch Schwinn Timber Mountain Bike. And I am going to be heading out to a spot to maybe grab a couple pictures by the water in a bit. So yeah, I'll see where I end up. So here I am. This is the Borman River Trail off the of Cass Road. This is near the kayak and canoe launch off from the new segments. This is where I decided to go after my bike ride to try to capture a cool image of something. And of course up top there's hardly any clouds at all. This is my composition I was considering. But again, as you can see, the sky is very unremarkable. And I think I misspoke. Really, it's just one gigantic cloud mass up there instead of no clouds at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this scene instead. All right. So if this is your first time joining me, my name is Adam Smith. And I am a landscape and natural history photographer based in the northern Michigan region in Traverse City. And I am going to interpret a landscape that I took a picture with my Kodak Z712 the other day. And I'm going to interpret it in such a way where there's some drama in the sky. Because when I photographed it, there was nothing going on at all. It was pretty much just a gray overcast sky, which is kind of the way it's been here in northern Michigan for a while. And pardon if I bump the tripod and the camera shakes. I have a quite peculiar setup to make this happen. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically writing my one foot by one foot canvas so I can put my wash on for my sky. And if you're familiar with Bob Ross at all, you'll notice that he does similar things in his paintings cobalt blue. I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to get that nice deep blue cobalt color on there. Spread it out evenly on the brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that to the sky and you can see the pigment kind of just flow across the canvas. I'm going to need a little bit more water. This isn't watery enough. There we go. And this doesn't have to be perfect because Painting isn't perfect, and neither is photography or anything in life. Okay, so what we're doing is just creating some blue here. And really, the blue in my photograph doesn't actually go down this far. There isn't blue at all, but I'm envisioning bluish January skies with some clouds in them for my composition. So the next step is to start to paint in the mid-ground in the background and some of the foreground, um, I guess you could call the sky some of the background, or maybe that's not part of any of it all, it's just part of the painting. So what I'm going to do is using what's called a medium gray, you can see that. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the sky color, but with the gray color. And I'm not, as you notice, I'm not really cleaning up my brush too much. I'm not getting all the pigment out because I like to kind of have the pigment carrying on throughout the whole painting. I don't really clean my brushes that much. Okay, so it was about like this. This painting is not going to be perfectly accurate to scale to the um, photograph, but that's what painting is. It's not meant to be as perfect. Um, this gray tone is going to be like a bad color wash. Another hair. Yeah, eyelashes everywhere. So this is going to be like the backdrop to the color that I'm going to be adding to this. And of course, I'm going to be presenting all this content in black and white or monochrome, so the colors won't really show up the same, but the tones throughout the spectrum of color will. Okay, so there's the gray. Let's bump the tripod again. Okay, that's pretty close. All right. So now that I have the gray in, I'm going to leave that there. Notice I'm not washing my brush. I'm going to start introducing some what's called burnt umber. Let's see how long it takes for this to get in here. Some of these paints are a little bit older than others, so they're a little bit more stubborn. And again, I'm not really washing my brush off. I'm just kind of mixing the tones up from what I already have. Okay. And as Bob Ross would say, there. And to me, this is kind of like a tribute to Bob Ross in his style. But it's not at the same time. It, there's some overlap, but 
a little bit different. Everyone does things a little bit differently, and that's what makes our art. Okay, so I'm, you can't see it, but I'm referencing a sketch of the compositional elements uh, in front of me. So this way I don't have to keep on flipping onto my uh, camera or my computer or my phone to reference the original composition. And according to this, it went something like that. That's not quite it, but close enough for this. This might not be the best painting I've ever done, but what I'm trying to do here is just show you that it doesn't take much to do a, a painting of a composition that you may have taken a picture of at some point and you just weren't terribly fond of because of a lack of something in the you know in the composition not really compelling you. You know there's some potential there, but you're just not there at the right time to capture it with what you've seen in your mind's eye. So with a painting, that's what you can do. It's in your mind's eye. Okay, so there's those two elements. And then I think in the foreground, right over here in this little area, I'm gonna just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of tick that in there a little bit like that. And again, just kind of free form. There's no big rhyme or reason. I'm not trying to be too, you know, careful about anything. It's just kind of flowing how it's flowing. And I think I actually have too much space here. I'm just going to get a little less water in that section. And there we go. I'm just going to dab that in. Okay. About like that. Okay, so now we have the foreground. And now I'm going to start working on what I wish the clouds would have looked like that day. Next, I'm going to start in the clouds. And actually, it's been a few minutes since I finished up the brownish gray sections down here. I'm going to be using what's called vintage white to start my clouds and the reason I waited a couple of minutes was is because I wanted the sky to be somewhat dry on the canvas but still a little bit damp so the clouds can kind of come to life on their own. I'm actually making a little bit more water. It dried up a little bit faster than I'd hoped. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit more water to this. Not too much. So I'm just going to go over to my white and you notice where I have my white it's right next to the blue. And there's a little bit of grayish tone there so that way the clouds have some dimension right off the bat. And just load my brush. It's, there's really no rhyme or reason. And I'm just going to envision where I wanted the clouds in this landscape to begin with that didn't show up that day. And you can see how the the water kind of kicks the water, or the rather the, the pigment of the white wherever it wants to go. And that gives those clouds a natural look. I'm not really trying too hard. This is just pretty free form of doing swirls. So it'll help with texture. Actually, a little bit too much water on that brush that time, I will admit. So I'm going to actually just kind of get some paper towel and kind of clean that off. And watch what happens this time. This time, it's not going to flow as much. But what happens is it gives you dimension. Because this white pigment with this cloud is starting to show up a little bit more than on the other one. So that's another way to add dimension quickly is to get your brush um, wet the first time or whichever times or alternate times and that helps with giving some quick dimension to your composition. Okay, so there's a cloud start. So I'm going to do another one. Oops, just bump the tripod again. I'll have a better setup next time, I think. I wanted to get this painting in because I think this is a lot of fun. Okay. So there's some basic cloud forms. Do another little wispy one up here. That little rascal just doesn't know where it wants to go yet, but that's where it's going to live. And I think I'm going to add some more pigment to it. This time I'm going to do a different kind of technique to get the cloud in there up at the top of the frame. And again, this is my mind's eye and its vision of what that scene looked like or what it could look like on a January day. Another little one over here. This is a little wispy one kind of off on the side here. Okay, so there's the clouds. I'm thinking I might have one more right there, but I'm not sure. I think what I'll do instead, actually, is add a bit of gray from over here. Come back here. And this one's already starting to dry in this first one I've done, so I can come back and it's a little bit more gray. And I can add some dimension to this one, a little bit more looming, you know. Maybe it's hinting at a storm system coming in. Maybe it's just because there's no sun there. I don't know. Okay. There. 
Okay. Let that dry and just need to see what happened to that dry. So for the time being, I am going to I think what I'm gonna do is let um I think I'm gonna let this dry for just a couple minutes before I start the next section. I'm gonna start next doing some of the trees in the mid ground here. And I might start adding some of the grasses that would line this area in this spot. But it kinda of looks like the winding river actually. It's like a sea of grass. All right, so I'm back now, and let's readjust this a little bit. I'm going to start working on the shrubs and some of the vegetation, I think. The key is to do this in stages so everything kind of looks natural. Now, I'm using a professional tool here. This is an Oral-B toothbrush. I bent the, the neck of it, and it has some really nice bristles for texture so you can quickly and efficiently get some neat effect. I'm going to do something like this to kind of bring in those shrubs, which are something that the birds, especially those songbirds, are really fond of. If you ever walk into those shrubs, there's tons of them all over the place in there. I can't believe how many birds utilize that little area. It just goes to show how important any habitat that we can keep undeveloped is or restore. Okay, let's see here. Come on, you rascally paint. Probably should have put this on here beforehand. Just a little bit of that. I'm putting it in at the same similar tones. So when I go to get this all set up for applying, it's all set to go. It's going to kick that over there. We can have a little bit of gray. There we go. I think that's going to be the tone for the strobes. I'm just going to get my brush in there, and I've actually never done this before, so this is kind of a trial run. Let's see what happens. I'm mixing the colors down there somewhere, I think. Okay, it's a good thing my teeth don't have that stuff on them. I'm going to start at the bottom. I think I'll work my way up. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's nice. should have done this before. Okay. So there's the texture of those. How easy is that? Just moments to get a hill full of shrubs. And scrub or brush, whatever you want to call it. Songbirds go crazy for that. If you're a bird watcher, I bet this area in the spring is to die for. Okay, and at some point in this corner, there's a couple of birch trees in my composition that I'll have to add in there. But as you can see, that's all I had to do. And I have this thicket of brush. And it's almost the same thing on this side too, but I think over here it's poplar or something. So I'm going to do something similar. But I'm going to go more to the gray side of this with the brush. I'm not even cleaning it off. I'm just, it's the same thing. Now oh, that might not work, but it might work. Okay, so I made a mistake here. That wasn't meant to be that dark, but another thing Bob Ross used to talk about a lot was happy mistakes. I think that's what he called them. So what I'm going to do is just get more of that dark color off. So you can see before I wiped it off there and that's what created that muddy blotch. But what I'm going to do instead here is go to my white side. And I'm hoping if I can just get that white off the top, I can kind of redeem myself a little bit. There we go. That might work. Good enough. It gives them more variety and texture to the scene anyway. Okay, so there's that. There. Okay, there's what I'm looking for. Okay. So get that on. I actually get that washed now. And I'm going to find my toothpick, which is one of my favorite tools to use for painting. I'm going to start to score in here a little bit, and you can use the negative space and kind of create the illusion of trees coming out of all this. This is a quick way to create that look of trees. See what that does there? It's pretty neat. Yeah, two books are cool for a lot of painting things. You can also use them to do birches in the background. So I'm going to come here and get some white. I'm just rolling it on there. And the birches were right over here. And I'm going to kind of go like this. And this isn't exactly what they look like, but for the sake of this painting, I'm going to work. There we go. I think another one jutted up right here or something. The 
couple more branches. Of course, in January, all the leaves are gone. Okay, I think there's a couple other ones, but something like that. So there's the birches. Then the next thing I'm going to do is do another layer on the clouds. I can get this brush. Okay, a little bit more white. Let's do a bit more white on here. I should have a little bit of gray. I just bumped the tripod again. It's so clumsy. Okay, so here we go. Now these clouds are really coming in. If you do a few layers of this, the clouds really start to shape and you get that dimension. It's all about dimension. These ones almost like purple for some reason, which is odd because I haven't put any purple on this yet. Which I actually plan to do, which I think I'm going to do right now. With this purple, it's called purple. There's the old dragon cap. Just a dab will do, I think. To add a little bit of purple to this. Okay. Oh my gosh, what a stinker. That's more than I wanted, but that's okay. Let's do this, and a little bit of water too, and pop that thing again. Okay. Because I'm still mixing from the same areas. Yeah, now these are more like January clouds. If you look at clouds as, as much as I do, they change throughout the seasons. And I think I think it's colder, the clouds start to take on a more bluish purple hue, tone, or whatever. Yeah, see, now I'm kind of mixing it all the one big cloud mass. A little bit more purple right here. This guy's going to be really purple. There we go. And again, too, I know I'm mentioning all these colors, but it, it's going to be presented in monochrome. So just keeping in mind that I think it's going to be pretty neat to watch. Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe it'll be a bust. But this is how I wanted to do it. Okay, maybe I can get a little bit more white out of this. And a little bit more white right here. There we go. And that cloud needs to do something more, I think. Maybe we'll go into this cloud. Maybe the clouds are friends. There we go. I like that a lot. And maybe I like something over here. I don't have any more white left though. Maybe let's do this. Something over here. Yeah, you never know. Okay. Well, anyway, there's the clouds. Something like that. A little bit more drama in the sky now as opposed to just a gray background. Next thing I'm going to do is get out my buttercup color. It's kind of like a yellow, off yellow, I guess. Kind of goldish. Kind of something you'd see in an old 70s house. Oh my gosh, there's just about enough paint there. Come with the brush a little bit. Do that a little bit. Do this a little bit. Put this in this area, closer to the um, foliage area, but it's going to actually go up into the clouds. I think that's going to have to be like that. Okay. Watch this. Add a little bit of yellow to this cloud. Yeah, it's a really cool, pretty day. Maybe the sun's starting to go down or something, I don't know. Actually, it would be if we're not yet, I guess. I'm just kind of throwing it in there, no rhyme or reason, really. This is what my mind's saying to do. And there's another hair in the, in the paint, like usual. Okay, and maybe do this over here. Roll that into there like that. Okay. Yeah, a little bit there. Maybe there's just some random stuff over there. I don't know. Okay, and now we're going to do this and just kind of pat it off a little bit so it sits in there and it kind of goes where it wants to. Maybe something like that. We need more white right there. There we go. Right there. Just a little bit more white. We need a little bit more white. I feel like that color needs a little bit more light. There. Okay, a little bit more there, something like that I guess, there, that's kind of cool. Oh, there's a little bit more white right here, there, that's kind of, we'll just blend that in. Maybe there's a snowstorm coming or something, which would be nice, so the ski hills can actually get a little bit of snow. It's not much fun to make snow, I'm sure, and it doesn't run the same as real snow. If you've ever skied before. Okay, I like that cloud going in there. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's kind of what I have going on. Now I need more on here real quick. 
over here. And I'm really dabbing it in now. Dabba 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 dabba. Okay, and a little bit of a brush on the bottom. Just kind of fluff it up a little bit. There. Okay. Don't quite overlap those rascals. A little bit more blue. There we go. A little bit of defining stuff there. Maybe a little bit more white. Yeah, there we go. Okay. A little bit more yellow. I don't think that's quite right. Okay, that's more like it. Maybe a little bit of yellow. No, that's not a little bit. That's more white. Around the rim of this purple here. Sometimes it happens in clouds. Let's take a look. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with those clouds. I'm not going to really mess with them much more for this painting. Okay, so now back to the foreground. I'm going to turn off the camera for a moment and get ready for that. Okay, so for just the last couple parts of this, I'm going to work on this area that kind of looks like a winding river. But it's actually a, kind of like a sea or a river of grass, rather. And I'm just going to use that um, color right there. What was it called again? Buttercup. I'm just going to use Buttercup. Now I'm going to find a brush like this. Kind of a semi-stiff blade or bristle. Blade, bristle, whatever you want to call it. And all I'm going to do is just, just go in here and do this. Just kind of fill it in a little bit. Just filling it in. Kind of keeping it up on its tip. I don't have to reload on occasion here. Let it overlap a little bit. Let it overlap here a little bit. Get some of that overlapping for layering, for some depth. Okay, keep doing this for a little bit. So I'm going to stop the camera because this is going to all look repetitious and I'll come back in a moment. Now I have that all filled in. I kind of washed it out a little bit with some water as I dabbed it in because I wanted to kind of go over the back on the original. Uh, bleh, I originally created. So now what I'm doing is I'm using my toothpick and I'm kind of scabbing through some of this black that was left from a previous step. And I'm kind of just putting it on here like this. So I'm creating more texture in the foreground of this painting. Much how I saw it when I photographed it. There. This is kind of a good way to use up some of that drying paint. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's thick. Oh, there's a little wetter paint, more wet paint. Okay, just kind of using it up on there. And as it goes that way into the background, I'm going to be using less of this. I'm just going to hint at it, kind of continuing on this way. Okay. And somewhere in here the river was, so what I'll actually do is um, get one of these smaller brushes. The bristles are kind of flimsy. Go this way and just a little bit of this. Go up to the side and I think it kind of sneaks around like that or something. It might not even be accurate, but for the sake of this painting, that's cool. Okay, and then over here, this area, I think we're going to kind of create a divide line because there was one in here somewhere. And the photograph. Okay, something like that. Maybe a little more of this. Like that. For some reason, there's a little blotch of snow that is still on there, out in this area. Okay, I should wash it out a little bit. Yeah, there's like hardly any snow left, and then for some reason, there's just little tracks of snow left, despite the warmer weather we've had. Okay, that's pretty good. And the next thing I have to do is put in a couple pine trees that were scattered here, 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 here. A couple up here, and then there's one over here for some reason. That's the last thing I'm going to do. Get some green, olive green. There we go. That over there. And what I'm going to do is get another brush. Again, fairly stiff bristles. Just going to get my brush just a little bit wet so it spreads a little bit and then 
that. So there was one right there here. Kind of hiding in this thicket for some reason. And then there's one right here. I love pine trees, if you didn't know. And there was a couple. There's one right here for some reason. Kind of sticking out. I think these are planted by volunteers, which is great because we need more of that to kind of restore this area and what it was. Yeah, these are pretty. I'm going to kind of indulge here and pretend there's more pine trees. Why not? This is a painting after all, and this is what I want to see in my mind's eye. And then there's another one right here or something. Yeah, these are really easy to do. There. This is like that. There's the pine trees. Yeah, I'm just going to stick up a little bit. Stick up, rather. Okay, that was kind of tucked away in there. And that's pretty much all there is to that part. And there's the pine trees. And then I think there's a little bit of green in the background. I'm going to dilute that quite a bit. And something else to know is I don't actually even change my water. I'm just using the same water that was there the whole time. And I'm filling that in. And then, oh, this is looking really good now with these trees in there. I'm going to go back and fill it brown. And I think I'm going to get a little bit more foreground interest. There we go. You can see that. It's almost just hardly anything at all, but it's just enough to show that there's more going on in the foreground than there is in the background. And we'll say that kind of disappeared too, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Well, thanks for watching, and I was probably going to say more wise things about painting and not bumping your tripod while you're doing all this recording and all that. But yes, yeah, so sometimes it's fun to kind of paint the landscape or an image that you've captured through camera and sometimes if you're not happy with what you saw on your camera what's to say you can't go back and do it with the canvas and these you know what I'm doing isn't really that fancy this is pretty straightforward stuff and I can you know just have some fun with it and maybe you don't like the painting in the end I might not like this painting in the end I don't know but it's here nonetheless and I don't know if I mentioned it but this is painting is based off of an area at the Borden River Trail over on Cass Road where the it's near the, where you go down the hill to the canoe and kayak launch and there's some rapids over there. That's where this is located. There's a bench there and this is about where you look at that bench down at the winding river. That's where this is. Okay I'm about to end it. So I think just a little bit more here. Oh, it's going to go wild here, why not? A little bit more dimension in here. Yeah, it's for the hay of it. There, why not? There, okay. Get that tree in there a little bit. And a little bit more brown over here. A little bit white in there, a little bit more yellow. There, that's the stuff. That's the stuff. That's kind of what I wanted to see when I saw this picture originally. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. This is just a quick little painting, and if I didn't stop the camera and just continue this whole painting, it would have taken me about 25 minutes total to do this. So yeah, it just goes to show you can do some cool stuff with just a little bit of time. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will let you know what I'm going to be doing next. I might be doing another camera thing. I might be reviewing a new backpack I got. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, thanks so much for watching. And oh, one more thing. Before I go, I forgot to add one little thing. I'll make this quick. A little bit more. It's called liquor. It's just the black color. This is so cool. we got to do this. Okay. We're going to add a couple flocks of geese flying across the horizon. Because they actually do come across here quite often. And often they fly in a fairly consistent, you know, V. Or sometimes it's almost like a Y pattern. And... Sometimes they go off kilter a little bit, but this is just the tip of my toothpick. I just make little dots. There's a couple straggling rascals over there. And of course there's one over there. And sometimes there's numerous flocks flying overhead. And we'll have one down here too. Just like that. That's all I gotta do. And well, maybe one more up here, why not? This is quite a day for them before the big storm comes to envelop this land in snow. Maybe I'll do the same landscape in snow. I don't know. Maybe a couple birds over here. Alright. That's it for real this time. Thank you. I'll talk to you next time.
curiosity killed my curiosity. You're becoming a curiosity.